So as the gale rages on behind us, I think we'll take the opportunity to uh, do some maintenance. Uh, we can change the fuel filters uh, on the engine. That'll be quite a useful way to spend an afternoon uh, because we're not going anywhere in this, are we? Confidence has a Volvo Penta D130 three-cylinder marine diesel engine. And in common with most engines of this size and type, fuel is sucked from the tank by a mechanical feed pump. That pumps fuel into the fuel filter. It's then sucked into the fuel injection pump where it's highly pressurised. The injection pump then distributes the pressurised fuel to each of the injectors where the fuel is atomised and fed into each of the cylinders in turn. Now, dirty fuel will stop an engine and so an additional pre-filter is often fitted. Both filters need to be changed regularly and you should always carry spares with you in case of an emergency. Let's look in practice then, and this is the fuel filter. The pre-filter is not on the engine but bolted to the side of the engine space, just here. Taking a different view and looking from above, you can see the top of the filter housing, and it's all a bit tight. Now, there's always the argument about genuine parts versus aftermarket alternatives, and if it was a few pennies difference, I probably wouldn't consider it. But in the marine market, there does seem to be a significant premium placed on genuine parts. Providing your alternative is the correct replacement, and from a good quality brand, you won't compromise the reliability of your engine. Some suppliers are now offering alternatives, and as you can see, the price difference is significant. Now there's various methods of moving these spin-on canister filters. Um, my favourite is to use these, a nice pair of filter pliers. Now we've got all our tools ready, I'd just like to smear the rubber gasket with a little Vaseline to help it seal and hopefully make it a little easier to remove when the time comes. So it's a fairly simple job, is lefty loosey until it's uh, loose enough to take off by hand. Now, if it's possible, pour as much of the old fuel into the new filter so that, firstly you don't have to get rid of the old fuel, but also it saves a lot of messing about re-jigging. Now this one's got me airtight, so it's a good idea to make sure it's on properly. So that's the easy one done, and now for the slightly more difficult one. Access to the pre-filter housing is restricted, to say the least. It's a 13mm nut on the top, which I almost have to do blind. But we get there in the end. The pre-filter includes a water separator bowl, and I'm pleased to see no evidence of sludge or water in the bottom half. So with this filter, there are some O-rings to replace, and uh, one of them is is there. Um, and it's quite easy to do, you just switch, switch the washer down and then pull it off. So we put this one on, this new one on nice and neat. Put that one on, up there. So we'll uh, wipe around a little Vaseline again. But after a couple of attempts, I had to ask my beautiful assistant to help, because she has smaller hands. Assembling the filter. It's not all bikinis and sunshine. <laughs> um, the bottom's in, top's in, and the screw. Is going in! Yeah! <laughs> We've done it! Oh my god, it got there in the end. That's it. So now the new filters are fitted, we have one final task to complete. It's inevitable that while fitting the new filters, there'll be pockets of air trapped in the system. 
and air will stop a diesel engine dead if it gets as far as the cylinders. So we need a method of venting the air, and that's where the big black button on top of the filter comes in. Undo a bleed screw and simply pump the air out with the button. If I just take it right out, which we don't really need to do. So it's hollow, and it has a little hole in the side. So there it is, look. There. Now what we want to do is point that at the back of the engine so it runs down the engine and not squirts into our face. Press the plunger. There we are, look, there you go. One last one, and then tighten that up. Now that should have got rid of all the air out of the engine, out of, out of the uh, uh, system. Now, it's important when you've changed the filter to, to start the engine uh, and listen to it a little bit, so that you're happy that there's no air drawn in and that the engine doesn't stop. Quick scan for leaks. It's been running about five minutes now, not a falter. Everything's good. All that remains now then is to give everything a good clean up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.